This was Raft 1.0 built in 2018 and here is Raft 2.0 from 2019. Now here is how I built Raft 3.0 this year. Just pretend you haven't seen the thumbnail. Huh? It all started after shooting this video a few years ago. Someone left massive chunks of foam in the lake and me caring about nature stole, I mean relocated the foam to give birth to Raft 1.0. Next version, it was a bit larger, but definitely wasn't stable and lacked overall eye-catching status. We set up camp as we had the lovely Swedish weather and started deconstructing the existing raft. Three, four, eight. Three, four, eight. Me, Alfred and his father, we were hoping to reuse the foam for insane buoyancy but it ended up not being worth as we added far more barrels than we planned so the foam would just be dragging in the water. We picked up the 16 barrels, they are 220 liters, so that should be around 3500 kilograms of buoyancy, which is insane. So we started rolling them down this little hill and started with the main frame. Then we had a Swedish Fika on one of the barrels. The top floor is standing on four of these pieces of lumber. They were cut in such a way that it could be inserted in the deck and connected to the main frame. Here you can see us put up the top frame and how the posts are inserted in the deck, which made it pretty clean. The length is 7 meters, 3.6 meters wide, 2.2 meters tall, and 3 by 3 top floor. Then we added channels in which the plastic barrels could fit in. We did also remove the chunk of foam later on and replaced it with even more barrels. At this point the bottom deck was all done, but we ran out of battery and bad weather came in and absolutely nuked us. <laughs> Here is the moment where we had removed the foam and replaced it with barrels. Out of 16 barrels, 10 were placed in this section, which is why it's tilted. But after adding all the posts and the top floor deck, it was pretty much leveled. I bored three holes in each post so that three levels of rope could be added on the top floor as railing. It looks decent, but wouldn't stop a kid from just rolling overboard. Then we added a staircase that looked fire and also made the top floor a lot sturdier. We did also plant artificial grass, but then Sweden pulled a reversed Uno card. That means that all the clips that you've seen till this point has been from last year. That's betrayal. The upgrades I did this year was removing the scuff paint in the back and sketched up this. I dusted off the table and oiled it, but I realized oil made it look way worse. This is after I slapped some paint on and now it doesn't look too hideous anymore. I was itching to remove this piece of wood, I reinforced with angled brackets and joined the bench to the main posts, but still if you hit just the right spot. There's 
so gullible. Clap the room, I'm coming through, they wanna see what I'm about. Yeah, I got skills, do it for the thrill. I'm on a paper route. Extra, extra read about it. I'm today's trying to tap it. I put commas over bullshit. Yeah, I put that on mamas. They trying to block all my blessings. Make note I lost and stepping. I bet on me and my team. ISO is what I'm rapping. Put on for the whole city. City. Yeah, I got them rocking with me. Dude, I've lost three anchors. I didn't go to Boy Scouts. I, uh, my my knot game is like non-existent. The first one just floated away. The second one I threw in, no rope attached. Like I didn't mean to, but the third one I made like a movie of how I attached these hooks so I could unhook it and use it to throw people the, the rope. All of a sudden it was gone. I, I threw the anchor in and, and it was gone. So that's why, so that, that's why I'm using a rock. Not that anyone asked, but there we go. Okay, I straight up do not know what to cover in this clip. I probably tried to film this two, three times and it's just too much information. I do not know what to keep in this video because Rat 3.0 is just so much information, the video would be one hour long. So I'm just gonna take you on a tour on the raft and show you everything we've done. Here we are. The bottom floor, seven times four meters. The top floor, about three times three meters. A total space of 35 square meters. We built the artificial grass that section is RAF 2.0, that's the exact size. We started with this section and it's really because it was already complete from RAF 2.0. The artificial grass is really just there to cover up all the dead wood from RAF 2.0. Uh, we put up the posts, made the frame for the top floor, and then we moved on to the front deck, which really was quite a breeze. The only drag was to put the barrels in. We have barrels going right here. And that was just a drag because we miscalculated how much buoyancy we had. And that's why you can see the foam still being in with the barrels in some clips. And that was just a huge miscalculation from our part because we did not need all that, all that buoyancy. And so moving up to the top floor, I just wanted to show you this. So I have, a, I have some furniture up here. The thing I wanted to show you though was the, these posts. So we made holes in them so that like this rope could go between all the posts. Uh, that wasn't such a good idea because this rope, when it gets wet, it gets really tensioned and when it's dry, like it's now, it gets all slack. And so once it's wet and in tension, it kind of, it, it makes all the posts really loose because it, it's like, it's like dragging and, and dropping them. Maybe it makes sense. Well, then I started to work on this section here and the question is really how reinforced do you want the top floor to be? You could have a diagonal piece going on all four corners of the posts and that would make a, a super sturdy top floor. So what I did instead was I made these diagonal pieces but not only I sketched up this bench and if you look you see here well it's connected in the post and so these three layers of wood hopefully reinforces like imagine if you had an entire wall of these then that would make this set back section super strong does that work i have no idea the top floor could use more reinforcing but right now we have like the optimal amount of viewage like it's so open everywhere and there's no piece of lumber going crisscross applesauce right Okay, so now time for the electronics. Sounds good? Yes, I designed it so you could open it. IQ 200. Let me take out the batteries and the motor on the bench to show you. But the inverter, that's just connected through an XT90 connection on the motor cable. And that's 3000 watts, it's really 1500 watts. But yeah, that works. Oh, sh Okay, this is battery number one. Battery number two looks exactly the same. It's 200 amp hours of lithium iron phosphate. It's 12 volts and I put these in a series or serial connection to make a 200 amp hour 24 volt battery for the 24 volt motor. Now they have a Bluetooth app so you can monitor just how much battery you use and it does actually work, which is a world's first. I really have been enjoying these batteries. They are sponsored. Maybe I should. Okay, I just gotta show you this. 82% state of charge. You can see the voltage. When the motor is running, you'll have an amp draw. This motor is 110 amps maximum. That's 2.5 kilowatts. Then you can swipe over. You can see the temperature, how much amperage, uh, amp hours you have left. And these numbers will automatically, like frequently update. So if you have the motor power on, on 100%, this time uh, average time to empty will go all the way down to like one and a half hours maybe two hours and that's how long time and that's how long time i can power that motor fully 
on full power, both batteries for two hours. That's pretty insane. The motor, not sponsored by the way. All right, so this is the ProTruar 5.0. I'll put the name on the screen, I'm probably butchering it. This is like the strongest trolling motor you can get. The, the Minn Kota motors you might be familiar with, this is usually like 32, maybe 55 pounds of thrust. This is 186. It's 24 volt, built like a freaking tank. The reason I'm making this raft electric is, I'll put up some drone footage. This lake is seriously not very large. It's about one kilometer long and about 800 meters wide. It's seriously not very large. Also, everyone around this lake have made an oral agreement to only use electric in this lake. So say, if you wanted to build this raft, how much would it cost you? Well, the electric motor and the batteries would probably run you like 80% of the total cost. And that would be 2,000, maybe $2,500. There are spots all around the lake where there is zero wind, no matter how windy that day might be. So that's what you see me do right now, is go to one of them. Okay, we got 24 hours on the clock. I can't imagine this being too fucking difficult. Come on, it's, it's a raft. Here we go, let's go out. Yeah, I think we should make it bigger too. Here's me questioning if bringing a TV was a little too much. Then we try to get the lights on the surfboard to light up. Two hours, that's all there is left on this 24 hour challenge. It's not much of a challenge if you enjoy it. That's number one. So for the next two hours, I'll probably just do some fishing. Something happened with the electric surfboard, so I'll try to repair it. A few other things I did was eat, and I did also catch a fish. Right, so here's my idea, it's not particularly smart, it's actually really dumb. I'm gonna take the electric surfboard, so I'm gonna go right behind that fallen tree in the water, go all the way really close to shore, and then continue on this path. Alright, that's uh, 24 hours on the raft, complete.
I'll give a like to this video if you didn't think it was complete garbage.